It was 2019 that the United Kingdom was last part of the WRC. And now, five years on, and after a year with the European Rally Trophy, the European Rally Championship returns to Wales for a switch from gravel to tarmac. It's Rally Ceredigion. And we'll start off with the entry list. There are only 19 Rally 2s entered into the event which is more like what we saw in Estonia with 21 or Sweden with 22 than what we saw in places like the Baran Rally Zlin or when it came to Rally to Roma Capital and the Italian round. The top five seats of the event are the five highest seated full-time ERC entrants, Hayden Paddy, Manfred Franceschi, Mikko Marcic, Andrea Mappellini and John Armstrong. Then we have the top five BRC entrants, William Crichton, Oshin Price, Chris Ingram, Keith Cronin and Matt Edwards. Then we have Callum Devine, the reigning Irish tarmac champion, followed by Marion Evans, James Williams and Gary Pearson for the BRC. The pack itself is rounded out by Prince Albert von Thunden Taxis, a returning Simona Tempestini who's now driving an MRF shod polo as opposed to the Skoda Fabia who was driving earlier in the season. Then we have Elliot Payne and Jason Pritchard. Five drivers are entered for ERC3 honours, which are Philip Cohn, Igor Vidwak, Alexander Tomov, Jakub Matulka, and Eamon Kelly. After that, we have eight drivers enter for junior ERC honours. Melia Hansen, Kalle Karlberg, Max McRae, Daniel Polashek. We also have Schultz, Aoife Rafferty, who has recently been named as part of the WRC's Beyond Rally initiative, Pevesento, and Brennan. The remaining Rally 4s are entered into junior BRC, as well as, in some cases, their Stellantis Cup for Michelin Shod 208s. In comparison, the ERC juniors are on handcuffs, meaning that if you're entered into the ERC junior, you're not entered into the Stellantis Cup, and vice versa. After that's the plethora of National Series entrants, which for tarmac rallies end up with a massive cast of different types of cars in the UK. On top of the literal dozen of Ford Escorts, we have modified R5 cars, as well as older rally-bred machines like Subaru and Pretzes and Mitsubishi Lancers. And there are some unique cars that you tend to find in British tarmac events, such as the Darien T90s, a handful of these monstrous machines that entered into the event. Then, much like last time out in Baron Czech Rally Zin, we have a lot of different cars from all walks of life. We're talking Army Rand Land Rover Wolf XDs, a Lotus Elise, an Austin Mini, an old Astra E from over 30 years ago to nearly as old Corsa B. Vauxhall Novas, MGZRs, Peugeot 306s, Chrysler Sunbeams, a Toyota AE86 and a BMW E36 Compact. Then there are new rallying machines, such as a C2R2 or a DS3R3T, some Polos and 206s and a Mark 1 Ford Focus. Now, some of these cars won't show up on broadcast, but they're awesome nonetheless and you can expect to see amazing photos and videos of them tearing up the stages over the course of the rally. In terms of the itinerary, and the rally is based out of the historic coastal town of Aberystwyth, with many stages being familiar to those who've taken part in previous editions. But there are also, of course, some new tests for this event. The show gets underway on Friday night with the first of two runs through Aberystwyth Super Special that starts at the football ground before running along the Old Harbour and around the castle and the coastline to the finish. The 1.34km bus we run four times over the course of the event, with a new segment taking cars up to the Old Harbour that is not featured in previous editions of the rally. The rally proper starts on Saturday with two loops of three stages. Rekfa opens both loops, with the 27km stage showcasing what to expect from the rally. Started about 350 metres above sea level, it features 319 metres worth of elevation from the highest to lowest points. Narrow single lane roads, blind corners and crests and some tight hairpins at junctions. There's a big fan area at the highest point, about 4 kilometres into the stage. Lindbrian is next, the 26.55 kilometre test starting around 129 metres with the highest point being around 500 metres above sea level. This stage is more of a climb as drivers weave their way around the beautiful views of the man-made lake. This stage has a lot more trees, meaning that if the weather turns wet, there's potential for drivers to be caught out by slippy or muddy conditions. Nantimok, the third stage of the loops, is slightly less extreme. The 14.52km test covers 172 metres of elevation, starting at around 250 metres above sea level and finishing around 430 metres. The roads here weave between hills and the reservoir the stage takes its name from with staples of British rallying such as cattle grids presenting unique challenges to the competitors. These are metal grids that can get that can catch you out and they also go between some very narrow wooden fences which 
could easily damage the car if you get it all wrong. This stage was previously run in the past two editions of the events, potentially aiding British Rally Championship competitors as well as anyone who was present when the round was run as part of the ERT last year. Sunday opens with Bethania, the 10.74 km test that runs along the B4576. This stage will see drivers weave between houses and local businesses on roads that typically see two lanes, so one going forwards and one going against you, just a regular kind of um, B road in the UK, on the way to the fastest time. The power stage of the event is Harford, based around Devil's Bridge and borrowing stages from the Clanathan and commissed with tests from last year's rally. The 17.84 km test features a mix of all different features that we've seen in the rally as it uses B roads, back roads, altitude, lakes and forest on the way to the finish line of the event. In terms of forecasting, the weather forecast can be important for the rally, which is probably why it was a problem that I didn't include in the preview for the rally Zin. It seems the rally Kiritigin will avoid the worst of any kind of weather, with a low chance of rain over Sunday afternoon being the main issue. There may be some winds over Saturday, but these are likely not to be extreme as the winds that we've seen in Europe in the past couple of weeks. And in terms of the ones to watch, Ocean Price won this event 12 months ago behind the wheel of a Polo R5, and this year is handling a Fiesta Rally 2 that he's already won in the British Championship with during the Rally Nut 7 Valley stages that used the mid Wales gravel tests such as Sweet Lamb that we used to see in the WRC. Keith Cronin's another driver to watch out for, a four-time British champion, as well as a 2016 Irish Tarmac champion and current leader of that series, who's recently won the Ulster Rally as part of the ERT, as well as the Jim Clark Rally as part of the BRC that is held on some similar kinds of road in Scotland. Chris Ingram could well be a threat, whilst William Crichton is the current series leader, he's yet to win this season, whilst Ingram has won twice. This will be a second BRC event to the Irish Rally 2, having started the season in Apollo. As the ERC regulars, eyes will be on Tempestini who's changing car and tyres this weekend. Matt Bellini is arguably the MRF expert in this event, while Franceschi will be looking to make up for a non-finish in Zlin and Patton himself a P12 finish. Franceschi finished second in Ida Canaria this year, whilst Patton's best finish is a third in Sweden. However, with Franceschi having two non-finishes this season, whilst Patton and Mika Marcek have scored on all six events, the best six scores rule might come in handy for the Frenchman come the end of the season. Arguably, Mika Marczyk has the most to prove, as the win will allow him to build up a great platform before his native Poland wraps up the season. Currently 10 points behind Franceschi and 24 behind Padden, it's no small feat to overcome, but whoever gets the most out of this event for the top three is the best picture for the finale in October. They all need to finish here, and realistically, they'll want a top five. And those are my thoughts and predictions. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. A review will be out on Sunday for the event and potentially a follow-up one for the BRC event in a couple of weeks. Until then, it's bye-bye for now.